Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video on some basic molecular shapes. Um, we know from experience what valence electrons are, and valence electrons influence our dot structures. We've drawn dot structures in the past. And now what we're going to do, we're going to use these dot structures to help us draw shapes, okay? Um, the shapes are determined by unshared and shared pairs of electrons, and there was a theory that we read in homework that's in our next slide. Okay, we have the VSEPR theory. The V stands for valence, the S for shell, E for electron, P for pair, R for repulsion. Valence shell, electron pair, repulsion. And simply put, it's basically the fact that electrons want to be as far apart from each other as possible, especially when they're in um, bonds, they want to be far apart um, from themselves as, as, as much as possible. Um, electrons carry a negative charge, folks. So once again, negative and negative, try to put them together, they will repel, okay, like charged repel. Now the analogy that we can use is two balloons right here. If we try to squash two balloons together, what happens, they'll eventually go into this shape right here, as far apart um, from each other as possible. All right. Um, in terms of our drawing the shapes, guys, we must focus on the central atom. It's very, it's very, very, very important that we do that. Okay, so focus on the central atom. Now the question might come about: How do you know which atom is the central atom? So basically, what we're going to do: We want to look at the valence electrons and figure out which one of the elements forms the most bonds. Okay, the guy that forms the most bonds is the best bet to be your central atom, okay? And another critical question is, does a central atom have unshared pairs on it, okay? Because the unshared pairs on a central atom helps influence the shape of that particular molecule. We'll be looking at it with some examples later. And another fact that we need to know is that unshared electron pairs have a larger cloud than shared pairs, and that also has an influence on the shape of the molecule. Okay, now what we're going to do, a bit of a recap here, um, atoms on an individual basis to the left right here. Now we have hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen on an individual basis. So what we're going to do, we're going to put in the dot structures for these guys. Now hydrogen only has one valence electron, so we will use one dot for that guy. Um, oxygen has six valence electrons, so we will put in six dots. Now, varying teachers and varying places um, vary in their um, desire to, to how, how to put electrons around the atom. Someone to follow the um, SPDF uh, orbital filling rule to a T, and some others, as long as you put six dots um, around it, they, they'll, be, they'll be happy. Um, in on an individual basis, we will um, make sure that we don't put more than two dots on each side. So what we're going to do, we're going to put one, two, three, four, five, six dots right here for this oxygen. And nitrogen with five valence electrons, we'll put one, two, three, four, five. Okay, but as I said before, different folks have different... Um, uh, levels of 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 desire to how to put them around, but make sure you don't put more than um, two per side on an individual basis. Now, when we move to a molecule, things get a bit different. Um, we have H two right here, and uh, we're going to draw the dot structure for H two, the hydrogen molecule. Now, each hydrogen has one valence electron. Okay, so what's going to happen is each each valence electron is one each. We're gonna just have a single bond right here. Now oxygen, with its six valence electrons, we're gonna do it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six on each side. Now notice we don't have any 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 dots on this side here or on this side over here. Okay, because when we're doing a bond or bonds, we don't have to follow the two per side rule. So what we're going to do, this guy will just simply link up like this, and it's going to be a double bond. All right. 
Now, in terms of nitrogen, we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and one, two, three, four, five. Okay, five on each nitrogen. Now, what's going to happen? We're going to ask ourselves, why are these guys bonding? They are trying to get to be stable. Now, hydrogen, his desire is to be like the nearest noble gas, which is helium. Okay, that's two electrons, so he forms, he shares right here to get to two. Oxygen wants to be like the nearest noble gas configuration. Um which is neon, so he will form a double bond to do that, okay? And nitrogen over here will form a one, two, three, will form a triple bond in order to get a stable octet, okay? So each of these guys, we've got single, double, and a triple bond here. Now this shape right here is called linear because each of these guys you could put a line right through them so it's a linear shape with a 180 degree angle okay all right we have some other molecules here now some of these we've probably done already in class already but we're just going to recap the shapes that we've been um, going through now we have co2 carbon dioxide now we have carbon and two oxygens all right now we know from experience oxygen has one two three, four, five, six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Now, how did I know to put carbon in the middle as my central atom? I look on the reference table. I see that carbon has four valence electrons. And if you have four valence electrons, you want to form four bonds to get to a stable octet. So carbon has one, two, three, four valence electrons. Now, what we're going to do is simply going to link it up. Oxygen has six already, and he wants to have two more, so six, and one more seven, and one more is eight. Okay, likewise, this oxygen over here, six, and one more seven, and one more is eight. Okay, now we look at the central atom, right, and we ask ourselves, are there any un- shared pairs on the central atom. Now it happens that car this carbon in the middle has no unshared pairs on the central atom, so there will be no repulsion of these double bonds here. Okay, so this guy will stay in this linear position. So CO2 has a linear okay, a linear conformation. Alright. Now our next guy will be H2S. Alright? So we look at H2S, we know hydrogen has only one valence electron, and sulfur has six. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and hydrogen simply has one and one. So there's two hydrogens. They will link up. And the reason why I drill like this, because I know from experience, right, that these guys right here, okay, these two electrons right here and these two electrons right here, they are unshared pairs, okay? They are unshared pairs. We have two electrons here, and we have two electrons here, and they are unshared. And what are they doing to these guys right here? They are repelling them and pushing them down, okay? So these unshared pairs repel these shared pairs, pushing them away. So this shape right here for H2S, even though it has three atoms just like CO2, will not be linear. It has a bent shape okay so the first two shapes we did one's linear and the other guy's bent so even though you may have atoms that have the same number of elements in them okay you have of molecules the same number of elements you have to be careful in terms of does the central atom does the central atom have unshared pairs or not okay because that would influence the shape okay we're going to do ncl3 now, we, once again, we look at our reference tables. N has five valence electrons, okay? And Cl has seven. So we have three Cls, each with seven valence electrons. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and what we have to do next is simply link them up. Now, why did I draw these guys like this okay 
Simply put, I know once again that I have okay, an unshared pair on top, which causes the R word, which causes repulsion to these guys. Okay, Now, it just so happens this particular shape, it's not bent, it looks similar to bent, but it's actually called trigonal pyramidal. Okay? Now, if you look carefully, the bent shape always has three atoms, and this trigonal pyramidal shape has four atoms in it. Okay, so we have to watch out for that. All right, and this guy over here, CHF3. All right, so we're doing CHF3. Now, what do you think is going to be our central atom? We know carbon forms four bonds. We know hydrogen forms one bond. And fluorine, group 17, halide, halogen, with seven valence electrons, will also form one bond. So it seems as carbon is our winner. Okay? Now what's going to happen? We'll put our bonds, our valence electrons around carbon. One, two, three, four. We have one H, so we can put it here. All righty. And that has one valence electron. We have three Fs, three fluorines. So F, F, and F. All right. And what we can simply do, we can simply put our seven valence electrons around each of the fluorines. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we just have to link them up. All right. So we link them up like this. All right. Now, the reason I use the, all these dots, because I've been asking class how come you know I don't use lines. We're just starting out, so we just want to see where the dots are coming from to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, later on, we can use lines to link them up, not a problem. But for now, we just want to really look at where actually um, the valence electrons are coming from, from which particular element. All right. Okay, so this shape right here. We have carbon as our central atom. We have four things coming out of it. And that shape is going to be what, guys? Yes, that shape will be tetrahedral. Okay? Alrighty. Moving on. Now, there's another shape that we didn't talk much about, which is called trigonal planar. And the reason why we didn't talk much about it is that all the guys and all the shapes that we've been doing they follow the stable octet rule, okay? But it just so happens the boron, right? Okay, when it combines with hydrogens to form BH3 boron trihydride, okay, does not follow the stable octet rule. So even though it's a legit shape, okay, we don't really talk about it much because we, we mainly go with the guys that follow stable octet rule. Now, when you guys go to AP Chem, when you go to college, you'll see that there are many, many, many other covalent compounds that don't follow the stable octet rule, so you'll just deal with it there. It's not a big deal, but it's just so that's just how it is. Okay, so once again, there's a trigonal planar shape, which we didn't talk about much, but it's simply because it um, does not follow the stable octet rule in terms of boron. Okay, now we can do what you're gonna do right now. You're gonna pause the video. I put one here for you guys to do, and we we'll call it a day. It's OF2 oxygen difluoride, and uh, we'll go from there. So pause the video. Okay, we have OF2. So we'll check it out. We have oxygen with six valence electrons wanting to form two bonds. We have F with seven valence electrons wanting to form only one bond. So we're going to assume that oxygen will be our central atom. So oxygen has six valence electrons, right? So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And F and F. Okay? F have seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, folks, remember, um, it doesn't matter whether you use X's or dots or whatever to represent your valence electrons because you really and truly you cannot distinguish valence electrons. But we just do this for emphasis. So if you use all dots for everything or use X's for some elements and dots for others, it doesn't matter. It's, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so we have six and one more. That's seven and one more. Eight. Okay, so oxygen is happy 
Now, Fs only needed to form one more, so they have one more here, and the Fs are okay. Now, the reason why I drew it like this is because, why? Simply, I know that these guys right here are unshared pairs, and what do they do to the shared pairs? They cause the what? They cause repulsion, and they push it down, okay? All right, they push their arms down, as it were. Now, what shape is this, folks? Yes, this is a bent molecule or have a bent shape okay um once again this is a very 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 brief video on um the basic shapes that we've been covering in class i hope it was a help and as always hard work plus sacrifice equals success i'll see you guys soon i will talk about how these shapes in turn will influence polarity okay so take care